Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Cathedral and the Diocese of Caledonia's worship on this Sunday, January 30th, the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. I'm David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, and the Diocese ministers on and with 10 First Nations, the Haida, Shimshan, Niska, Haisla, Gitsan, Wasetuatan, Delkane, Sakani, Cree, and Dunisha, along with the Meti, a privilege we gratefully acknowledge. Today, we are blessed to be joined by members of the Vancouver School of Theology community on this VST Sunday. The diocese has enjoyed a long relationship with VST and has renewed it with a new certificate program. For more information, listen to the principal and contact the Synod office for more details. So please listen to our welcome from uh, the principal, Richard, and then Ray from the Indigenous Studies program will open us in prayer. Friends, I'm Richard Topping, President and Vice Chancellor of the Vancouver School of Theology. Thank you for your participation in VST Sunday. This annual event has brought faculty, students, and staff to share in the worship of churches across the country. And we just love this opportunity to support the work of our partner denominations and to tell you a little about the work of the school. Like all of you, we have felt a little like we're running in the sand in the recent past. It takes more effort to achieve the same results in a time like this. And yet our faculty, students, and staff have shown such resilience and support of each other. We conduct our classes completely online now, and that's opened up the classroom to students across the country and around the world. We've reached record enrollment numbers in our classes. Our guiding principles are the safety and well-being of the VST community and the delivery of an excellent theological education. 2021 was our 50th anniversary. We built a new Zoom room with immersive technology so that students online are full participants in the classroom where others are physically present. We just received a large $1 million grant from the Lilly Endowment to renew our field education programs, ensuring that students get excellent mentorship in preparation for ministry. Plans and estimates are in the works for the re renovation and renewal of Epiphany Chapel to green the building and to make it an inviting space for worship and student activity for years to come. We want our facilities to serve our mission to educate and form thoughtful, engaged, and generous Christian leaders. Here's what three of our students are saying about their classes uh, taken at VST over this past year. This has been one of the most inspirational classes I've ever taken. Another said I've studied in New Zealand, in London, and now at VST. I've enjoyed it all, but my experience at VST is far and away the best of the three. And finally, I'm feeling and understanding this time as a gift from God to renew my faith. Friends at VST, students go deep with God so that they go wide through the church to the world in service. Please pray for us and our deepest thanks for your support, especially in this last year. Blessings to you all. Creator, today I look to the east and I thank you for the wisdom and good things that come from the east. I pray you would give us strength to learn. I thank you for the healing and abundance that comes from the south. I pray for healing to come to all our relatives. Make us people who your healing and love flow through. I face the west and I remember those who have gone to be with you. And I ask you would help us remember and live better lives because of their memory. We even thank you for the hard things that come from the north. Give us grace to understand how we live in the midst of these challenges. I look down and thank you for Mother Earth who shelters, feeds, and teaches us. We look up to you. You are big and we are small. Help us. Now that we are in the sacred center where all things are related, help us to grow and be who you created us to be. All my relatives. Aho. Our opening hymn is, O oh Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High.
Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and keep you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God rules over all the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. We say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. God rules over all the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. A portion of Psalm 71 is appointed for us today. We shall say verses 1 through 6 responsively by the whole verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. After years of straying from God's ways, King Josiah guided the people back to godliness with Jeremiah's help. God speaks to the prophet. Since before he was born, God has known him intimately and has dedicated him to his service. He will support him in this ministry despite his youth inexperience, and apparent lack of authority. The first reading is written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, beginning in the first chapter at the fourth verse. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, 
Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing our next hymn, Blessed Assurance. Paul has further instructed the Christians at Corinth about the gifts of the Spirit, telling them that three groups of gifted people are especially important, namely apostles, who spread the good news, prophets, who tell of new insights into the faith, and teachers of the faith. Now he says that the most important is love, the expression in the community of Christ's love for us. The second reading is written in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, beginning in the 13th chapter at the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, 
I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is, Tell Out My Soul. Jesus attends the synagogue service on the Sabbath. He has just read some verses from Isaiah. He now tells worshippers that he fulfills them. He is the expected Messiah. He will rescue all those who are in need. God's promises made to Israel are fulfilled in the new age. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heavens were shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, 
all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's passage from Jeremiah includes some of the most famous words from the book. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. Words that are often read for comfort, you can find them on posters and plaques. There's many good options on Etsy. They're nice words. God has been been with Jeremiah before there was a Jeremiah, and God will continue to be with him. I am with you to deliver you, says God to Jeremiah, when Jeremiah stutters. But I'm just a boy, a frightened, inexperienced prophet, and a reassuring God. That is what we get from the lectionary selection. But the lectionary is a little misleading here. Yes, these words are comforting. But if we look at the context, things begin to go south. The book of Jeremiah starts by telling us when Jeremiah preached, from the reign of Josiah until the captivity of Jerusalem, until the captivity of Jerusalem. What sounds like a boring list of kings is really a heading to let us know this will not work out. This is not like the book of Jonah, in which the prophet preaches, the people repent, and everything is well. This book ends in exile. God may be with Jeremiah, but that does not mean the people will listen to Jeremiah's words and avoid the coming disaster. At the other end of our passage, God and Jeremiah do a few exercises to calibrate Jeremiah's prophetic sight. What do you see? God asks him. I see a branch of an almond tree. I see a boiling pot tilted away from the north, answers Jeremiah. God says, good, and then delivers devastating interpretations of these images. Out of the north, disaster shall break out. I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, and they shall come, and all of them shall set their thrones at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all its surrounding walls and against all the cities of Judah. Right about now, I imagine, Jeremiah is wishing he had seen something else, anything else. God tells Jeremiah that these thrones around Jerusalem, a siege against the city, is a judgment on the people of Judah who have forsaken God. And the people of Judah will not like hearing about the judgment God promises, telling Jeremiah his own people will fight against him. Imagine being in Jeremiah's shoes. What God promises him is this. Outside the walls of Jerusalem will be the kings of the north, determined to destroy Jerusalem. Within the walls of Jerusalem will be the people of Judah, determined to fight against Jeremiah. Rarely has the expression between a rock and a hard place felt so appropriate. This is the context of God's comforting words. And exactly what does God offer Jeremiah to counterbalance all the bad news? There's the bit we've already read. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. And I am with you to deliver you. Also, towards the end of the chapter, I have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall against the whole land. They shall not prevail against you, for I am with you to deliver you. God is making Jeremiah ready for a siege, and God promises to be with Jeremiah to deliver him. I don't know how familiar you are with the book of Jeremiah, but let me tell you, this deliverance falls a little short of what I would be hoping for were I Jeremiah. It sounds like God promises that Jeremiah will be okay, and Jeremiah most certainly will not be. There are moments of hope, like Jeremiah's redemption of a field, but the rest is bleak. The people do not listen to Jeremiah. In fact, they ridicule him. He gets thrown in a pit. Eventually, he goes into exile to Egypt, though he tells the people, whatever you do, don't go to Egypt. After Jeremiah leaves for Egypt, we don't hear of him again. 
it would be nice to have a story of how he comes back and claims that field he redeemed, or how in Egypt he does what he encourages the Babylonian exiles to do, build houses, plant gardens. But we get nothing. Jeremiah disappears. I've been thinking about this and wondering, what exactly does God promise Jeremiah, and what does God give him? In what way is God with him? Whatever God's presence means for Jeremiah, it does not mean success or safety. It doesn't mean status. Jeremiah becomes more infamous than famous. I wonder if, in the case of Jeremiah, God's promise to be with Jeremiah is just what it sounds like, a promise to keep him company. God will do other things, teach Jeremiah to speak, give him messages to deliver, tell him what is to come. But the comfort bit, the thing that is for Jeremiah himself, not for the people, seems to be God's company. I knew you before you were you. I will go on knowing you, and I will stay with you. That seems to be what Jeremiah gets out of all of this. And honestly, my first reaction is to be annoyed. Here is Jeremiah, waves of hostility, armed hostility, coming at him from every side foreign armies over here, his own people over there, and everyone loathes him. Company seems beyond the, besides the point. Where are God's signs and wonders? Where are the plagues or bread from heaven or the invisible angel armies that in other stories save the day? I'll keep you company seems so much less than what the situation calls for. I want the God of power for Jeremiah someone to take away his troubles and make it all okay. And then I think about Jeremiah and about our time. Things are not okay right now, and it is a long time since they have been. The issues are different, but most people right now can identify with standing in the middle of trouble, with things coming at you from every direction. We too want the God of power to sweep in, to fix things, to make things better. But so far, the troubles are with us, and it is not clear when that'll change. Does it matter in all of this that God is with us, that God keeps us company? My own experience of COVID has been shaped by being pregnant and having a baby. I got pregnant right before COVID shutdowns went into effect, in that period when it seemed like this might not be a big deal, that it might be over in a few weeks. Pregnancy and early infancy was something my family did alone. From when my daughter was born until she was eight months old, no one outside the immediate family and a few healthcare workers touched her. She was almost one the first time my parents met her. We saw people at parks outside, but that was it. No hugging, no handing her over to be bounced in other laps by other people. What I'm trying to say is that I've come to appreciate company in a new way. I miss movie theaters and crowded restaurants and dancing. But most of all, I miss just company. Being with people without worrying. Inviting too many people over at the same time so that our, our apartment becomes a chaos of dishes and shoes and everyone's jackets mixed up. Being able to see people inside again is one of the most wonderful things about being vaccinated. Going for walks and playing in parks is all well, but at some point it is just wet and cold and I want to sit around a table. Which takes us back to God and Jeremiah. I think I feel annoyed because God's promise to be with Jeremiah seems empty. It feels like an insufficient promise, a promise of so much less than God is capable of. But company, when I think of it in concrete terms, when I think of what it has meant to not see people over the last year and a half, it's not less or insufficient. Company is at the heart of life. Company is rich and delicious and everything. Company is also what God gives us in Jesus. Jesus does do some miracles and there is the business of the forgiveness of sins. And all of that is important. But the goal of it all is company, God with us. 
God eating fishes and loaves and maybe having a cup of coffee. God attending our parties and our weddings. God meeting our family members and our friends. God staying up too late with us. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. God tells Jeremiah, God has always been with him in this way and will always and always will be. God promises to Jeremiah, God's promise to Jeremiah isn't a solution to the problems Jeremiah is facing. It is something more. Jeremiah gets to have that which everything else is aimed at. The purpose of all the chaos, the prophetic speeches, the begging the people to repent. Jeremiah gets to be with God. For myself, I don't always feel God's company. Rarely does God's company feel as tactile and as present as the company of my friends. But God's promise to Jeremiah makes me hope that God's company can be just as real, just as close. I want the end to this pandemic, to the floods and the fires. And I still wish God would step in to solve it all. I could use some signs and wonders. But I also hope to experience God's presence, to know what it is to sit at a table with God. I am with you, says God to Jeremiah. I am with you, says Jesus to us. Together and apart, may we know and experience that God is with us before and now and forever to the end of the world. Amen. Thank you, Mari, for your inspired word. And thank you to all who continue their tithe support of their parishes and the diocese. It is most appreciated. Our offertory hymn is Once to Every Man and Nation.
Together we say, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us confess our baptismal faith as we say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray in faith to the one holy and undivided Trinity. To the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. For the Church of the Living God throughout the world, let us ask the riches of God's grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who proclaim the word of truth, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for Justin, our Prime Minister, for all Indigenous leaders, and for all who govern the nations, that they may strive for justice and peace. Let us ask the strength of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For scholars, research workers, and seminarians, especially for all who study at BST, and also for the staff and faculty of BST, that our studies may benefit humanity. Let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, and also for all those whose faith is known to you alone, Lord, let us ask the peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the mission of the Church. Draw your Church together, O Lord, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving Him in His mission to the world, and together witnessing to His love on every continent and island. We ask this in His name and for His sake. Amen. The Colic for this day. Together let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, and in the language closest to our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and a special thank you to our VST guests today, Richard, Ray, Mari, and Amanda, and of course, to Dorothy for doing the readings. 
It is a wonder to have us all be able to be together, though apart at this time, and a blessing to have a relationship with VST and wonderful programs and courses that are accessible, especially now. Some of the best lectures I've heard in the past year have been from VST, and I'm very appreciative of all that they do. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and indeed forevermore. Amen. We continue to gather as a diocese Monday through Saturday at 1215 Pacific 115 Mountain from here at St. Andrew's Cathedral and on their Facebook page for a service of midday prayer. Nightly at 9 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Mountain, we gather for a service of Compline on the diocesan Facebook page. Please join us as you're able. Our concluding hymn today is, Lord, you give the Great Commission.
Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.